You're watching convention coverage on site. Let's all say our names. One, two, no, I'm kidding. Sarah Natachini. Nat, Nat, Natachini. Natachini. Yeah. Okay. You can say however you like. Yeah. yeah. I won't. Mind. Are you are are you friends with the voice of Pikachu or the, any of the other Ash Ketchums? I've never met any of the other Ashes. I've never met any of the other voice actors in other languages except uh, Nachiket Dige, who's the voice in uh, in, in India. Oh, and he's wow. awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. cool. We did like cool. a, a thing together online. Cool. He's wonderful. But I want to get all the voices of Ash together. That's actually really that should dangerous. be like, like such a series. <laughs> I would watch that. Yeah. All the ashes just uh, ashing it out, like ashing it out. Yeah, <laughs> like, like yeah. I think it's like a, a dimension <laughs> problem. Like y'all aren't supposed to meet because if you do, one of y'all will probably cease would, to exist. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all the would be like. No, we must all catch them all. We must catch them slogan. Hello. 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 So, oh, anyway, hey. Hey, I usually uh, have some cute and cuddly moments, so uh, I'll, uh, I'll ask, ask from both of shows. So what is your cutest and cuddliest moment from um, Pokemon and My Hero Academia? My cutest and funniest moment? Um, I, I said cutest and cuddliest moment. Cuddliest oh. moment? Yeah. Well, anytime Pikachu gets in Ash's face, I guess. <laughs> oh, 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 there was... Um, <laughs> There was a, a scene where Ash and Pikachu uh, go to sleep, and Ash is singing to Pikachu Aww. last season. Aww. And in that same episode, there was a scene where Ash's mom, also played by me, um, <laughs> did the same thing, and I got to sing to Pikachu. It was so sweet. And I basically improvised that melody, and that was really sweet. Aww. Yeah, that's my That's answer. super cute. Yeah, that's nice. Good memories. Okay. What's cry. yours, um, heroes? I guess I guess I have two. I guess the, the Pokemon one is um, getting to surf with with uh, Eevee. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that was like the cutest freaking thing. That's cool. Um, Eevee yeah. riding on the tip of the surfboard and we're like hitting the big waves. That's <laughs> as cute as it gets. Um, I think for my hero. Uh, Without spoiling, it's the it's the grand reveal of what Rhodey's uh, kind of purpose and quirk is in the movie. Um, but it's it's yeah that that always gets me. I uh, I can't really think of a cuddly moment except for the part where a pony takes her uh, her uh, contestant and she uh, takes him up to the sky and then like doesn't really win but also doesn't lose. <laughs> that was pretty cute and cuddly, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, hope you're all doing well. Yes. Oh, great. Thank you. Uh, are there any like existing IPs you would love to work on, like say, like X Men or any other anime or games? There's so many. I know, right? There's so many. I'm yeah. one of those weird people who like I have a lot of bucket list things, and usually I keep them to myself because I'm very superstitious about it. Oh it's yeah. It's so weird, and it's it's like my hero was a perfect example. I never talked about it publicly because I was like maybe one day, <laughs> <laughs> and if I talk about it, I'm afraid they'll be like, hey, well, you know, like so. He's I, begging for it. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. this guy so I, who I'm sounds just... exactly like you, but isn't you? You know, there was one actor who did that, like, but he did it publicly on Twitter, and he ended up getting in the show. I want to be Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend now, actually, who's like campaigning on Twitter. It's, he's been doing it for like a year to direct. Uh, I, I can't yeah. say, but like a really big move. I don't want to say. I don't know. Well, I don't want to call him out. I don't want to call him out. He's saying it. <laughs> he's saying it. He's, he's saying, saying, it. saying it. I don't know. I feel weird about it. But a good friend of mine is like campaigning to direct a, a big property. And he should. He should. He just directed a, a, another big property, another mm. big IP, and made it into a movie. And he did really, really well with it. Um, I'm just saying it could work. I would love to read for Chainsaw Man, I'll say that. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. The next Chainsaw Man, ladies and gentlemen. Manifest, cool. manifest. So, it's <clears throat> questions kind of for all of you. I was just wondering if you could talk about the process kind of behind the scenes when, you know, do you, are all the voice actors together? Do they do their parts at the same time? Ah. Um, you know, I asked Sarah earlier about ad-libbing and stuff like that, you know, so I was wondering, kind of a follow-up question to that, if so, if you're together in the booth. It's, yep, I guess it's a multi-layered question because it's a yes and a no. Um, mm. In in prelay animation, where where it's usually just a script and you can like, and the animation actually hasn't happened yet. In the before times, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> before all this kind of happened, we would do group records and you'd get everybody in the room and play off each other because you also didn't have to worry about 
matching lip flaps or timing or, or fitting in spaces that were already like adhered to. Whereas with dubbing and a lot of video games, it's usually just we're just isolated and it's you and the director and the engineer and the director is ultimately the person who kind of is over, like umbrelling everyone and is working with all the actors and knows the, the emotional places they need to sit in and makes it all kind of fit together. Mm -hmm. So when you see like a really great dub, it's because the director is able to like understand, you know, if they're working with this actor on a Tuesday and yeah. the other actor is finishing that scene on like a Friday, they can still make it feel like they were in the same room, you know, and, and yeah. that's... That's the, the magic of dubbing, yeah, mm. for sure. I've heard that there being very rare circumstances where uh, they did have two main characters or two people dubbing at the same time. I did that once. But they did a partition between yeah. them, yeah. but they could hear each other. I yeah. actually did that. I would love to do that. That's so cool. Right? Yeah. You did that one time. I did it with Kellen. We did, Kellen. Um, it was a live action dub, so it was a, it was a live action uh, film. And it was a French film, I believe, and we were dubbing it in English, obviously. Uh, but we, we were in this giant, like a, like a theater screening room, and we were literally just standing like, maybe like 20 feet apart, and we each had a wow. microphone, and it was, mm. yeah, it was just the That's room awesome. was so treated, and wow. we were literally, we worked off the rhythmo band. So yeah. there's, there's two ways that we do uh, dubbing. There's mm. something called a rhythmo band, where the words actually like move across the bottom of the screen mm -hmm. so that you can see where like it starts and the tempo kind of plays out and then there's the beep method which is three beeps and then individual lines and it's a little bit more piecemeal it's just in a oh. script yeah, yeah. I haven't when you seen do that rhythmo for... band i have a, i have a question yeah um <laughs> when you do rhythmo band do you rhythmo go band. straight through like, yeah you play the whole scene you just play it's the whole so scene so satisfying yeah no and some it depends actually sometimes i still go piecemeal that's it true. Depends yeah. on the director. It also depends yeah. on if it's a really chunky thing, if there's yeah. a lot of different things. If you're screaming, then you gotta be quiet. Yeah, like, right, it, exactly. There's so many technical things too. Because yeah. um, you gotta adjust the gain. Yeah, there's yeah. a whole there's a whole thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was the only time we got to do it. It was kind of an experiment because I don't think anyone's really done it since in that way. But it totally worked, and yeah. we, me and the other actor who were uh, working on it. Um, who, if anybody knows uh, Kellen Goff, um, mm -hmm. all kinds of things, that's, that's who we, uh, we, I was working with. And uh, we had been friends already, so it was very easy to like, just play. Just and play. like, you know, we yeah. knew like, oh, I'm not, like if, if your line is more prominent here and we're speaking over each other, yeah. we'll let your take be the dominant one mm -hmm. on this moment. Like we just kind of like strategize as we went, but it was, it was really fun that way because you get to be alive like yeah. with the person. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a long answer, I'm sorry. No, that was good. <laughs> that was oh, great. that was great. <laughs> Oh, Elden Ring. <laughs> Elden Ring. <laughs> I'm playing Spirit Fear. <laughs> I heard that's really sad and amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I forgot the name of this game I just played. I don't, really, I don't really play video games. I play enough for everybody here, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a really Same. beautiful game that I just played. I played like all through, all through the night, and that's why I don't play video games, because I can't put them down. It's a problem. Um, <laughs> Was it what's what kind of, called? Like, when you play games, do you like is it like walking simulator style, like point and click, story based? Like, what's your? I don't like story. Mm, it's a just weird to thing to say. You just yeah. want to beat up. I don't things. like. I don't like narratives. Um, Who are you? No, that's not. I know what a terrible person. What are you doing in a sign uh, of No, right. <laughs> I just I like to get through it. I don't know. There's oh God, what was this one? It's a beautiful game. It's very dark. It's very cinematic, uh, and it's just this creature walking through. And uh, sometimes people start shooting at him, and sometimes there's like a car that blows up, and you have to keep going back to the start. I just described oh. like 80 games, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, I, I almost guessed four Call, different games. Call, yeah. okay, what do you think? I like well, more. at first I thought Hollow Knight, but I was like, no way you're playing Hollow Knight. No. There's no way I'm playing. No. I have no idea what it is. It's not that story based though, but you might like it. I don't know. Okay. But they do talk sometimes. Do you? Do you? I don't want anybody talking. <laughs> no <about> dialogue. Because <laughs> I was worried about. No that. voice acting. <laughs> There's no absolute quiet, beautiful music. It's they concentration. They don't like actually talk. I think they just go like. Eh. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> I could do that. Eh. that um, I had I had a very long stint with uh, mobile games, and I had to put all that I had to put all that You're away. I had to put that away. <laughs> and I still play Pokemon Go sometimes, but I, if I do it two days in a row, I have to cut myself off. <laughs> yeah. I I, I feel that. You, you need yeah. like one of those like parental locks. That, I need like, a parental lock. Out of your time limit. Yeah. yeah, that way like you can still play, but like there's nothing you can do once the time is. Then I'm gonna be frustrated all the time and feel like I'm being controlled. <laughs> I think you need that. No, I'd just rather <laughs> ignore it altogether. 
At but the end of season two of Dragon Maid, Miss Coriatra, that's how I can remember it. Did yeah. you freak out of the wedding dress? I freaked out. Oh my God, Tora <gasps> looks so cute in the. Yes, um, I lost all of my chickens. <laughs> it was so cute. I was like, <laughs> Miss Kobayashi's in a wedding dress. Okay, I prefer her in a <laughs> suit, not a dress. Yeah, I was surprised by that. I mean, she looked really cute in the dress, though. Yeah. But like, I was surprised that she wasn't in the suit because she looks so sharp in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Miss uh, Kobayashi. Will you marry me? <laughs> she was like, I wish nah. The, I wish the voice of Miss Kobayashi was here. She would love to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Thank you. <laughs> Ursula. Ooh. Ooh. That's a good one. When I'm old enough. <laughs> that's a really good one. One day. Oh, man. I think... It's mm. it's pretty cliche answer, but I think Spider Man. He's always been my favorite superhero, mm. and You're a, you are Spider Man. I would love to be Spider Man. I hear you. I, I hear would it. love to. One day. <laughs> One day. <laughs> Manifest. Uh, I'd always. It's probably because I was obsessed with Sailor Moon. I've always wanted to be a Sailor Scout. Oh heck yeah. Yeah. That's achievable. <laughs> Who does that? Cool. I know, right? Yeah. One day. That would be so cool. Uh, Voice acting. <laughs> I, um, I love painting. I I paint. Um, I I won't say that like I'm good at it, but I love painting like abstract, crazy things. I make a lot for, like gifts for friends and stuff like that. Um, I I used to be in a band, so I I uh, still write songs and stuff for for fun and just to kind of like stay in that space. But um, yeah, painting's like my ultimate turn the brain off, not thinking about like turning it into a monetization or, you know, like anything where it's just, just for me and my friends and stuff. Yeah. Cool. That's, that's cool. That's really special because almost everything I've ever done has become a job. That's, that's <laughs> kind of like, I, yeah. I tend to be like that too. I'm like, oh, I will do the thing. I and, can do this. Yeah. I can make yeah. some money on it. That's but the I, mindset. I like being able to not have yeah, that it, pressure. It helps, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I take pictures. I, 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 I lost my camera. Yeah, I was just gonna ask if you got it back. <laughs> yeah, I should check my messages. Alyssa, um, I can't believe this. This is the second this is a tragic row. story. That it's, it's. Um, I'm. A, you know what? It's I've lost really it sad. twice now. Yeah. So I feel like it's not meant to be mm. with me. <laughs> it, I just need to let it go. Someone who's always wanted to be a photographer but can't afford a camera is going to find it. Yeah, and may that person be blessed. Yeah. Um, with your, uh, was it your grandpa's six-year-old birthday pictures? Imagine a brilliant blind photographer. Huh? What do you like the Um, architecture mostly. Yeah. I like mm. shapes. I like light. I, I, when the light is beautiful. I like cities. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I don't like you know, No, you're fine. You're fine. If it's like if it's like mm. Lance, if it's like <laughs> Sure. Sure. I like mm -hmm. architecture a lot. So I like photographing buildings. Mm. Um, but also in nature if there's something structural. I like structure. Mm. It's kind of my thing. Mm. Um, what's it called? Uh, and I play piano. What? Whoa. Heck yeah. Surprise. You just met me. <laughs> I didn't know uh, that. You did things. We you went over, we went over you like everything yesterday when we met. That's true. Yeah. That's true. We hung out for a while. There's so much to unfold. <laughs> so much. I know. I'm just a little origami. Love um, it. Yeah. What else do you do? That would be such a chaotic that band. Be chaotic. <laughs> that would be so. It would be the There's kind of band where like it. they'd show up for band practice and probably not get anything done. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Truly, but oh. they would like have a really cool band name and like aesthetic. They just like yeah. they like get to the show and be like, "Oh crap, we forgot to rehearse at all." <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody <laughs> have like a song yeah. like at all? <laughs> no. And like Rody would be like, "I can't afford instruments." So. <laughs> 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 like, Rody's probably got like a pocket harmonica or something. Yeah, like I, a proper street boy. It's like I don't what know what to Ash say. Boy? I uh, I I at least have a kalimba. That's like kind of what I could do. I I, I have okay. nothing much more to give. You sing though. That yeah, I do also sing. Like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I'll do harmony, I guess. 
Um, oh, I, I, uh, I like to do a lot of things, um, kind of like a jack of all trade. I like, I like cooking and I like gardening and oh. I, <laughs> I like painting and st as well. Lots of crafts. Like very cool. Yeah, very crafty. crafty. Um, everything that's on like the creative side of the brain, that's mostly what I dabble in. Um, but I cannot really play instruments well. Um, yeah, my throat is the only instrument I can do. You say that <laughs> it's the now. cheapest one. It's the cheapest That's one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Except for when I destroy it. Uh, <laughs> thanks to Borderlands. Yes, thanks oh, to Borderlands. No. I had to stop like like one or two hours in like early. On that session. A lot of times, oh, yeah. Oh my god, no. it was brutal. It was awful. I was like, I'm dying. Hey, can I come back another day? Oh no. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. <laughs> that was Gucci. Yeah. No. What do you mean? Isn't he 35 in a what? ten year old's body? No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Imagine an older why? man to be like, come on, Pikachu. I tell you why. Um, because Ash needs to be there for every generation of Pokemon fans. Mm. Yeah. Aww, yeah. You're all growing so up nice. with the same Ash that your parents grew up with. You know. Yeah. He's here for us. <laughs> And he always will be. <laughs> that I don't know, but hopefully. For all three of you, um, is there a favorite voice actor or somebody that inspired you to become a voice actor? Oh yeah, um, the my my like most immediate answer is. Um, You're gonna steal mine. I just. I don't it. think so. I don't think because it's not. It's not. Yeah, I don't think so. It's Keith Silverstein. Oh yeah. Um, oh. Who I just think has one of the greatest. One, his voice is just incredible. It's like. He's got this incredibly, like, it's, I can't even do it. It's just this incredible, like, <laughs> just smooth thing that he just has such control over. And he's such an amazing actor. And he was one of the first um, voices that I heard doing one of my first jobs ever in a mm -hmm. session. And I remember, like, he was like, we played off each other in a scene and he had recorded previously. So I was doing my lines and then, like, this guy spoke in my ears. And I remember turning around to the engineer and being like, who is that? Yeah. And he's like, oh, that's Keith Silverstein. I was like, and and now we're friends, and it's like, it's so cool that I get to like know him, and 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 uh, he's so generous and kind, and um, yeah, continues every time he does something. I'm just like, dude, you're so good, so good. <laughs> so, yeah, that's Keith. so cool. I had a bunch. I mean, Robin early, early, like Robin Williams and Kevin Klein. Yeah. Yeah, they weren't like solely voice actors that inspired me because I didn't really watch cartoons that much. I kind of grew up in a very adult world and it was all like movies that were totally inappropriate for me. I grew up, uh, I, I became an adult yeah. when I was three years old. So. <laughs> did you also see Rocky Horror Picture Show like way before you should have? Because I definitely did. Uh, yeah, maybe. That one didn't affect me so much. For some reason I wasn't like, oh my god, amazing! Yeah, it wasn't, yeah. It wasn't no, I don't like, think, I wouldn't say it was necessarily an amazing reaction. I just, I saw oh. it very young and I was like, what yeah, is probably. Hap what's happening yeah. to all of my emotions? <laughs> <laughs> There's so much happening. <laughs> feeling. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What am I feeling? Yeah. What am I feeling? <laughs> uh, yeah, so those were my two earliest inspirations. And now I have, um... Oh. My friend Barrett Letty, I remember the way I met him, we were both doing this like little kids show and we were doing it separately. And uh, I hear him in my voice and I'm like, whoa, who's she? And the director's like, oh, that's Barrett. And I was like, I must search up this Barrett. And I find him and he's like, already messaged me on Instagram a while ago, like it's such an honor to be in a show with you. <laughs> and I write him back, I'm like, dude, what? Are you kidding me? I'm so honored to be in anything with you. You're genius. He can do anything. Yeah, he can amazing. really. He's amazing. Yeah. So yeah, he does a lot of audio books. He's an Audi Award winner. Very talented. We're um, surrounded by an incredible like yeah. peer community. Yeah. yeah. There. It's. It's honestly. Yeah. It's. You could like. We could name anybody that we know and be inspired. And by be them. like, oh my god. Yeah. It's yeah. insane. It's insane. Yeah. There's not a day that goes by where I don't see someone announce some role or some show some scene that they're doing. I'm like, how did you what? do that? Yeah, like, yeah. And I'd be like, you were so cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. we fanboy so over good. each other all the time. I know, it's yeah. disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> like in the comments, I'm proud of you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm proud of you. I have trouble with the word proud. I have trouble saying I'm proud of someone that I had. Because you don't want it to seem like. Yeah. like well, if I didn't have anything to do with their success, yeah. 
unless mm. I like push them in some way and and they like had to overcome something to get there, mm -hmm. then I'm proud of them. But if I didn't like push them in any way and I didn't have anything to do with their success, or, like what do you mean <coughs> I'm proud of you? I'm happy yeah. for you. I'm their mother now. Yeah, like I'm not your mother. <laughs> I am. Uh, oh, are you, my <laughs> you can be my mama. That's okay. <laughs> so I mean, how did you end up voice acting? Ooh. We tripped and fell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then a director picked us up. <laughs> yes. And I said, uh, can you talk, child? <laughs> speak, speak into the mic. <laughs> Beautiful, like a little bird. Yeah. Uh, uh, I go first. Okay. Yeah, um, that's right. <laughs> uh, that's right. I uh, was a rhythmic gymnast until I was like 13 years old, and then I quit very aggressively. Aggressively. Yeah. I was like, I'm never doing this again. I won a bronze medal at the Junior Olympics. Out of that building and Absolutely. I was like, I'm done. I have a medal. I'm out. Uh, and my mom was like, well, you're not going to sit around doing nothing. You either like do doctor or do lawyer. And I was like, I'm not doing doctor or lawyer. Um, so she asked me if I wanted to go to acting school. And I said, yeah, sounds great. And uh, they sat us down at Lee Strasberg. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. And um, <laughs> <laughs> we uh, sat there for three hours. They got a bunch of kids to sit for three hours and basically that meditate. That's impressive. Yeah. Ah. We sat for three hours with our eyes closed and felt hot in a cold room and felt pain where there wasn't any. And I was like, this is absolute magic and it's something I want to do for wow. the rest of my life. So I decided that I wanted to do this when I was like 13 years old. That's like what I normally do in my room. Yeah, that's pretty weird. <laughs> it explains why you got It's them. free. <laughs> She's well practiced. <laughs> oh, that's called method. Your yeah. method. <laughs> so after four Not years anxiety. of that, I did. Um, I started pounding the pavement right after that, and I started taking improv classes at UCB and Magnet, and uh, searching for an agent, doing all the workshops, and taking uh, like random classes with casting directors and stuff like that. I got my first agent. I got a manager, and um, I happened to get the audition for Pokemon. It was one of the first auditions I think I ever had. That's amazing. Aww. That's yeah. so cool. I had like extreme Damn. beginner's luck. Extreme. Like, I've never heard of That's that. That's so cool. You were selected. That's very I cool. was selected. <laughs> <laughs> it's not luck. It was fate. Yeah. I, guess, I guess. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Something, someone up there likes me. So, well, I, I did it. I genuinely <laughs> think a lot of the time it's like the roles are waiting for the right people to show up. You know, it's a yeah, weird, maybe. it's like just one of these yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. You mm -hmm. gotta, it's luck, but you gotta be prepared for the luck. I was yes. very prepared for the luck. Yes. You got it, yeah. It doesn't just happen out of thin air. You know, like, I wanna be a voice actor, and tomorrow you get the audition and get it. I was ready, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I have a, a weird trajectory. I, um, <laughs> I've, I wanted to be an actor and a filmmaker and a comic book writer and all these things when I was a little kid. So I was obsessively watching movies and drawing and, and creating any way that I could. Um, but I, uh, growing up in New York, I, my family was incredibly supportive, incredibly like artistic and weird and creative, but nobody was actually like in any form of the industry. Mm. And as much as my family supported me, they didn't quite know how to like help me navigate and permeate. Mm. So. They were incredibly encouraging, but that was kind of like they like needed me to figure out to help them. And this was like before we had the internet the way that we do now. Like yeah. there was so so much access we didn't have immediately. Um, oh my God. So I would do school plays. I would make student films with friends. I yeah. got into. I would go to uh, the city and take classes. I went to um, HB Studios. Oh yeah. And um, did improv and scene study and all these different things and just fell in love with it and still couldn't quite figure out how to permeate and I was a I was a teenager I was you know 12 13 and I was like this still feels like it's for people who were born into this or something like there's no access I don't understand this and at the same time I uh, picked up a guitar and I was like oh this is a thing I can immediately do I can write a song myself I can tell my friends hey let's do this thing we can make something happen and make momentum happen so I literally, from 14 till about four years ago, uh, spent almost 15 years of my life playing in bands as a singer and a guitar player, and we were touring around and making records, and um, 
also working like a bunch of different jobs to also make that work. It was never like, we're rock stars, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but we were insanely passionate and spent all of our time and money and energy and everything into making this thing. And we uh, moved out here together, uh, out to Los Angeles from New York as a band. We drove out in a van uh, over That's five awesome. days, uh, just oh like gosh. madness. And <laughs> so um, cool. For, for about two more years here, we, we played and tried to like find success, uh, find a way to, to sustain the group other yeah. than just working all these different jobs. And it got really hard. And so it got to this point where the band had to break up because we were best mm -hmm. friends and we cared deeply about each other. And it's like, mm -hmm. what's more important? This thing that we know is not working anymore or this friendship. Yeah. So you break up the band to save the family mm -hmm. and it was this stark realization for me that I suddenly had this clean slate in my life. I was 32 and it was the ultimate time to make the biggest leap possible. And I was like, I think I'm supposed to be acting. Like, I think the universe is telling me to take this crazy leap. And so I just went full force. And at the same time, sorry, it's a long story. At the same time, uh, I was working a job for two years straight that was like my full time, you know, paying me to pay the bills kind of job. Mm -hmm. And uh, they laid off our entire department the same week that my band broke up. So I had literally no job, no identity, no purpose, <laughs> and it was, you know, and no backup plan. And my backup plan was the craziest backup plan. Yeah. So I took what was now unemployment checks that I was getting and decided, okay, I've got about six months until this runs out. This is, I'm getting paid to be an actor now. So I'm going to use this money, I'm going to spend every day taking classes again, training, submitting myself to different websites, because I was thinking about on camera and theater again. I didn't even think about voiceover. And I ended up doing a short film with a friend uh, who, and that was directed by a really phenomenal uh, voice actor who's been working in the industry forever. And he was really the first person who was like, you're good at acting, do you like doing voiceover? And I, suddenly had this realization of like, oh my God, I do. I play video games all the time. I watch cartoons. I love all this stuff. Yeah. And so I, I made a reel. I, I focused my energy more into the nuances and understanding of the different applications of it. I, I really educated myself as much as I could. Um, and still do. I think we all still do. It's a, yeah, you're never, oh, you're yeah. never done oh, learning yeah. or growing. You're ne it doesn't matter if you, you're, you've done the biggest, coolest mm -hmm. thing yet. Like yeah. that mm -hmm. means you just have to keep working harder. Yeah. Um, but I fell so deeply in love with it, and specifically with voiceover. This is the first time I got into a booth and realized what it was. It was so liberating. Yeah. And then it was just a, this crazy thing. I just took a gamble, and I, I had a reel. I had some on-camera credits and little things like extra work, like really measly stuff. And I started reaching out to different studios and places that had submission forms that were available or whatever the access was a, a lot of it sent like literally sending emails being like I'm never gonna hear from these people and Some a few weeks later some a few months later I I ended up getting cast in my first video game a bunch of dubs all kinds of stuff like almost Immediately to the point where it was like kind of weird Wow. and I literally went from zero to full time within like two months and I haven't stopped in like It's been almost four years now so He's talented. Nice. Very lucky. Very, 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 very fortunate. Um, awesome. And surrounded by incredibly generous people. And yeah, um, mm. yeah. And, and if anything, this really long-winded story hopefully can show you that you can do this too. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean it's easy. Mm. It doesn't mean it's a guarantee. Yeah. But it's possible. And mm. if you love a thing, whatever that thing is, mm. you just put yourself into it completely and know that you're worthy of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my God, should we cry? <laughs> <laughs> I already started. I started, but Bravo. did you see me like going on? Like, yeah, I, <laughs> I was like, oh, I hope she doesn't notice. <laughs> I noticed so nice. everything. I, I don't know how, what to say after that. Um. <laughs> I just did my taxes and the amount of money, I just did my taxes. <laughs> um, the amount of money I spent on classes this year is, uh, was sho actually shocked me. Oh. <laughs> And I've been doing this for 16 years, so it never stops. Was you it like the price of a new car? Depends on the car. Hmm. <laughs> the, the little eye twitch. <laughs> the eye twitch, like, oh, God. <laughs> uh, a little cheap, a little wild, you know, four wheels and a seat. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. it, was the, it was the wheels of a car. 
The wheels of, mm. car, wheels oh, okay. of a Maserati. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn. Um, Anything else? Oh, did you not speak? I, no, speak? I went forever. I yeah, just talked yeah, forever. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> you make it quick. You got it uh, acting. You right, so yeah. I, I did a lot of choir, show choir, musicals, and theater uh, all throughout high school and into college. And um, it wasn't until after I had finished high school that I started to uh, look into voice acting because it was a form of acting that I had not done before. And I was a very mm -hmm. curious creature. Um, so I st started researching it uh, heavily and I started getting my own like little closet going on and uh, you know microphone getting all this set up and taking on some indie projects here and there and then at some point I moved down to Texas where Funimation is and I signed up for open auditions and I didn't hear back for them for like eight plus months and I was like cue me like sobbing in my bed saying like I'm a failure <laughs> I can't make it <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, not before it started oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but then they finally reached out. They're like, hey, we're having the open auditions. Do you want to come in? I was like, yes. <laughs> 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 and so that was how I got my start into voice acting was just by sending out an email to a talent coordinator and uh, going into the door. And I actually Sorry. just got an agent like this year. Um, yay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so I'm like looking for stuff in other places too. So. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> the journey is wild. It is. The journey is wild. Yeah. And it's and and the other thing is like once you're doing really cool stuff, it's it's that weird thing where like it doesn't just mean you get to keep doing cool stuff. Yeah. Like the thing mm -hmm. is like suddenly you'll get to read for really cool stuff and you're like then you don't get it. And you're like at least I got to read for it. You know, oh. but there's yeah. there's I just throw up my hands. I'm like, yeah. what, what? Are you kidding me? Well, then there's that. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But no, it's. I mean, it's. It's a never-ending process really of like. It, 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 good, <laughs> good show, though. Good show. Well, um, but it's like it's like victory and heartbreak all the time. Yeah. You know, and yeah, constant. And you just it's kind of, like, rejection. It's, a, it's, it's a just weird everyday job. rejection. Constant I get rejected rejection. every single day of yeah. my life. And that's literally all of us. Like yeah. like the the cream of the crop. Like yeah. the best. You know your favorite actor, whoever that may be. Like we all go through the same stuff, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's it's a crazy job. But the the wins are so wonderful. And, yeah. and even getting to have moments like this and share this stuff with you, like I never thought I would be here doing something like this. This is insane. Yeah. It's like the fact it that is. you guys are giving us your time and your energy. It's, yeah. This is so cool. Thank you guys. Yeah, like younger me would be like, "What? What? What are you doing?" Current yeah. me is like, "What?" <laughs> it was like, "What? You're pretending to be the characters that you used to pretend to be." <laughs> That's in cute. Your yeah. Yeah. No. I think all of us ran around in, in like superhero costumes and stuff as a kid, right? Or dressed up. To oh, I was not allowed. Yes. <laughs> pretend to be a Pokemon. I, they put a suit on me right away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, yep, I bet yep. you look in a suit. I bet you kill it. It was a cool suit, bro. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It was, it was fantastic, but. Uh, Sorry, but we're actually out of time at this point. So if you do have questions, though, please head down to their booths. Uh, go and meet them. Ask Why questions. Why do keep on talking? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Thank guys. You. Thank you, guys. Thank you so yeah. much.